right, guess who's back for episode eight of the Will and Russ Sports Podcast? This is Russ, aka the Prophet, and this is your boy Will, aka Nos. I'm sorry, Will Stradamus. I almost lost my thought process there, but yeah, <laughs> I'm back. Right. All right. So, what are we doing today? Um. Well, I mean, we're we're gonna we're gonna do some. Uh, we're going to continue on for what we stopped at last time. We're going to rank our top 10 boxers of all time, regardless of weight division. Um, right. Or era. Or era, right. Uh, so, you know, I'm ready to just jump into it, man. Um, did you want, do you it. Go ahead, want, want to do yours first, and then I'll go after you, or you want me to go ahead and... Uh, you go ahead. First. You kick it off. You kick it off. Okay. All right. So this is my personal rankings from 10 all the way to number one. Okay. So all the listeners, man, if you can disagree, you can cuss me out if you want. You can yell at me. I don't care. This is what I feel is, is, is the top 10 greatest boxers of all time. Right. In my own personal right. estimate. And, and nobody can can argue that that's that's your picks all right all right here we go number 10 evander the real deal holyfield okay yeah what are your thoughts on him i mean at number 10 holyfield at number 10 i mean holyfield was a was a great heavyweight absolutely um you're not the only one that i've heard put you know that has holyfield in their top 10 so that's that's a good way to start. Okay. Yeah. Um. You know, Evander, man, Evander Holyfield was was just just a he was a a, a bull, man. You know, Evander was so underrated in my opinion. Um. When you talk about heavyweights, I mean, he is mentioned, but at the same time, you know, as far as the heavyweight division, there's a lot there's a lot of great heavyweights, but I put him in there yeah. as my number ten because and he, and he was also a great um, um cruiserweight too. Before right, he became right, heavyweight, right. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, Evander man was, was so. Evander had the heart of a lion, man. You know, yeah. he would fight anybody, anytime, and 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 Russ Evander Holyfield had one of the best chins I've ever ha- I've ever seen. I definitely you know, agree the there. Box. I mean, yeah. I was watching. It's funny you say Holyfield at ten because. I was watching just a few days ago. I, I was watching old clips of um, when he fought um, Lennox Lewis, you know, right. which is a fight people thought was a robbery that Lennox won. But just just on the point of of chin, I mean, he took some big shots from it, but from a big heavyweight like big um, Lennox, and and I mean, kept coming. Like he just kept coming. He, they went yeah. to decision. I mean, whereas. You know, some others didn't survive Lennox, take, especially those type of blows from Lennox. So, yeah, he definitely, I definitely vouch for that chin. Yeah, no doubt. Um, he, you know who he fought to that, that he took a, a, a huge amount of punishment from and, 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 and kept right. coming. Right. And, um, not, well, him, him too, but uh, uh, Riddick Bow. Yes. Yeah, Riddick Bow. Oh, my God. That's those, another those, big heavyweight. Those, that was a yes. big heavyweight, yeah. Riddick was huge, man. Riddick was about, he was all of 6'5", six, 6'6", six, right. six, maybe 260 pounds. And just, right. and you know, uh, you know, Evander was like, how how big was Evander? Wasn't even that big. Evander was about 230 pounds, maybe? Yeah, Evander wasn't, he was not a um a, one of the bigger heavyweights. You know, him and Tyson were on the smaller right. side for right. heavyweights. Yeah, exactly. And Weight-wise. today, I mean, with these guys today, they're like super heavyweights. I mean, these guys are giants. You right. Know what I mean? Deontay Wilder and Fury and, and Joshua. Yeah. Those guys are big boys. Yeah. The compared Klitschko to, brothers. Yeah, I mean, the Klitschko brothers. Sure. I mean, compared to Holyfield and Tyson, yeah, those guys are giants. But Holyfield took on the Giants back then, the Giants that we had back then. Exactly. Exactly. And he and he held his own and he beat some of them rightfully right. so. You know, right. so I, I got him I got him at, at my at, at number ten for me. Um and uh, coming in at number nine, I'm gonna go with Sugar Ray Leonard. Okay. Uh, yeah, Sugar Ray Leonard, man. You know, to me, was the first 
Sugar Ray Leonard had had some 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 like he had some epic epic battles, you know, with guys like like uh, Tommy Hearns, you know, uh, Roberto Duran. Yes. You know, Hagler. Hagler. You know, he he. You should, Ray Leonard was uh, Ray Leonard was one of the uh, one of the more elusive boxers of our time, and um. Yeah, he was very underrated with his speed and and power. A lot, yeah. lot of people, you know, when when, when they when when they uh, talk about Sugar Ray Leonard, they talk about, oh yeah, he's he's speed. And, but man, Ray Ray has some power behind him now. Oh yeah, you know? and 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 when he hurt you, he was gonna finish you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, Ray, and you know, he fought me. Yeah, a total of what 30, 36 fights, twenty five knockouts. That's that's yeah. not bad at all. Nah. You know, only three losses, one draw. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, good Sugar Ray. Too. Yeah, yeah, good chin, exactly, and and very durable. Yes. You know, he, 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 I mean, Ray fought a lot of long, long, epic battles with in some long rounds. You know. Right. Uh, so yeah, I I, I got yeah. Ray Leonard at number nine. You know. And I mean, um, Sugar Ray Leonard is my all-time favorite fighter. Not not as far as the rankings we're doing tonight, but I'm talking about like my favorite fighter of all right. time is is Sugar Ray Leonard because he's the one that introduced me to boxing. So okay. that's that's a that's a good pick there. You won't get no arguments from me. Right, right, right. Um no doubt. So all right, well I'm gonna keep moving here. So number eight is Julio Cesar Chavez. Okay. Yeah. Julio Cesar Chavez was I mean, this guy, you want to talk about durability and longevity. I mean, this guy fought over uh, over 100, 100 and, what, 110 fights. Right. Um, he, he, I think his record was 108, 62, and 2. He had 87 knockouts, Russ. I mean, he had yeah. power. That guy had a lot of power, bro. He had a good chin, too. Yeah, he had an excellent chin, too. Um, but what, what stood out to me with Julio Cesar Chavez was just – his ability to sort of weather the storm in a lot of fights. Cause he fought a lot of fights that he, he was getting beat in, you know, and, and Meldrick Taylor is one that comes to mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he exactly. You know, that, Oh my God. <laughs> Don't remind me of that one. Jesus right. Christ. That's, <laughs> that was rude for Meldrick, you know? Right. And, and, Me too. And, and then when that fight out and when it happened, I said, Oh my God. <laughs> And uh, yeah, Meldrick, you know, Meldrick wasn't the same after that, Russ. No, he, he never just, was the same again. Never was the same again. Unbelievable, man. That's crazy. So yeah, he's he's my number eight fighter of all time. Um, well, my, my number seven. I, I really want your thoughts on this guy. Um, my number seven fighter of all time is is, is Bernard the Executioner Hopkins. What are your okay. thoughts? Okay, great middleweight. Um, definitely. Um, uh, a great fighter, great defensive fighter, uh, a cerebral assassin, yes. and exactly. had a had an ability to impose his will on his opponent. You know. Yes. Absolutely. And he'll beat you mentally too. Yes, he would. He, and sometimes he'll beat you. He'll he'll beat you mentally because of what he does pre-fight. Yes. You know, what he says and what he does pre-fight. He he can talk you out of your. Uh, uh, out of your, your, your off your game, you know. Um, case in point, um, Felix Trinidad. Oh yeah, yeah. He Not dismantled, bad. dismantled surgically. Um, Felix Trinidad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Felix, Felix didn't know what hit him. I mean, you know, remember when 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 they were doing the the, the pre fight promotion, and um, Bernard went to Puerto Rico. I to remember. And the flag thing, the flag incident yeah. you talk about, yeah. He grabbed the fight, the, the flag, broke it in half, and stomped on the Puerto Rican flag. <laughs> right, right. That was very disrespectful. <laughs> very disrespectful. I mean, that, if you want to talk about, I mean, and you know, so, honestly, to be honest with you, it, it, Bernard's actually lucky to actually make it out of there. Out of I there, mean, yeah, yeah, for real. Because <laughs> that was unbelievable, you know. Right. And, uh, and and what made it worse was the way he beat Felix, too. I mean, he absolutely just dominated him, dominated for, him. for for 11, uh, 11 and a half rounds. Yes. And in, I'm sorry, for two, yeah, 11 and a half rounds. And for the, at 
towards the end of the 12th round, just finished them off. It was this classic Bernard Hopkins defense, picking his spots. Uh, um, some, some, some nice, I mean, he was making Trinidad eat a lot of jabs. And, yes. Yeah. And, and Felix, man. He just neutralized him. I mean, he straight he up complete, neutralized him. Complete, exactly. Completely. And, you know, Felix, really, Felix only had, like, one really good punch. And that was his left cross. It was right. deadly. But right. it, it was just, I mean, once Bernard knew how to, to he took and, that yeah. away from him. Yeah. yeah, when he took that away from him, Felix couldn't. He just couldn't do it. You know, he he, he it's com- like you said, com- completely uh, neutralized him, and and he, it was over. You could see it in Felix's eyes. I oh yeah, he, he was a beaten man. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I remember after the seventh round, when Felix, you could look in his eyes after the seventh round was over. Going back to his corner, and you could see in his in Felix's eyes, like, damn, I can't beat this guy. Right. So yeah. So his, uh, his dad knew it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't he That's eventually true. throw the towel in? Um well, no, he didn't. He didn't. No, his he, dad he didn't throw the okay, yeah. They wanted to, but yeah, Felix they wanted like, to. Yeah, he wanted to keep going. And then, you know, Bernard just finished him off in the twelfth round. Right. Um yeah, so Bernard's my number seven. And I know my number six, you would love this guy. I love this dude. Um, the pride of Brockton, Massachusetts. Marvelous Marvel. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Him? I mean, my thoughts on Hagler, like I told you earlier, I mentioned my all-time favorite fighter was Sugar Ray Leonard. But out of that, um, as they call him, the... Is it the Fearsome Four or whatever from, or the Fantastic Four, the Fabulous Four from the 80s with Duran, Leonard, Hagler, and Hearns? Yes. I, I believe Hagler was the best out of them. Yes. I, um, I, I you know, I, I definitely believe he was the best out of them. He, and even though Leonard's my favorite, but that doesn't mean I think he was the best. It, um, right. I, I think um, Hagler was the best out of them. I mean, the guy was just absolutely amazing. Yes. Um, he was. He could switch hands, you know. He could box you. He could go toe to toe with you. Yeah. I mean, had underrated footwork, you know. Yes. So, and, and and talk about chin. Yes. I mean, talk about chin, you know. Yeah. And, and and the heart, you know. We talked about heart with Holyfield, but man, Hackler had heart too. You Big know, time. went through a lot of hardships early on in his career. Yes. With, um, being um robbed in some fights you know yeah but sure that that dude was serious i mean that guy you could hit him with a mac truck and he's he's coming he's coming yeah i mean I, you know? marvin was just one of my all-time favorite boxers yeah he, he definitely tough, man tough as nails you know yes. and, and would never back back down from anybody would no. keep at you and and sometimes he would just overwhelm you just by his sheer his, his his sheer ability to just dominate you and 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 you know take you out out of your game physically, I mean, just he was relentless. Yeah, you know. So yeah, he he comes in at number six for me. Um, number five, uh, this guy is actually still fighting. His name is Manny Pacman Pacquiao. Pacquiao. Yeah, right. I'm, I, I I you know I'm not a, he's not my favorite boxer, but I gotta give him. Respect, man. It, this, yeah, this dude, Pacquiao has earned his respect. Yeah, absolutely. He's fought, and I mean, Pacquiao has fought everybody and anybody, you know. So I can't take that away from him. Um, he he he's a very um, he's a tough fighter, very confident guy, quietly confident, and uh, for a small guy, Russ, he packs a punch, don't he? That that left hand is, is oh my dynamite. God. Dynamite. I mean, that yeah, that left hand is dynamite. He he's got some some explosion in that hand, man. Yeah. I mean, good and grief! A, and he's a very um very sneaky fighter, you know. Even Floyd after the Floyd fight, Floyd said, I, "I see why they you know they give this guy a lot of credit because he's he he sets he sets traps." That's what that was Floyd's exact words. He said, um, "Pacquiao sets traps in there for you. He has this he he sets traps to get that left hand on you." And, yeah. and and he does it well, and it's slick. He's pretty slick with it, mm-hmm. you know. That's how he I, caught Mayweather in the fourth round with that left, um, that sent him back going to the ropes, and everybody got all excited. But yeah, yeah, that's how he caught him there. He set a trap for him, and, and Floyd threw a lazy jab, and he came right over it. 
So, yep. yeah, I mean, Pacquiao, Pacquiao's earned his, he's earned his respect. Absolutely. He beat, and he just beat Thurman, I mean. Just beat Thurman, right, exactly. He just beat a bigger guy, bigger fighter. Right. And right. that's what that's what his, his mo. He he fights bigger guys and beats them. Um, yeah. You know, uh, one thing I will say about Pacquiao, um, he throws a lot of punches. Yeah. Which, which can get him in trouble sometimes, but most of the time it hasn't gotten him in trouble. It, it actually that's his style. You know, what I mean, he he's a volume puncher. Uh, you know, the one time it did get him in trouble was when I thought he was dead when he got hit by this guy was uh, when he fought Marquez. Yeah, I mean, I thought, I thought that, I thought, honestly, I thought there there would be a burial for Manny Pacquiao because yeah, he, he was down, he he face planted him. Yeah, he was laid out like like Apollo Creed. You right. know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was. That was a that was a crucial knockout. I mean, all I, all I, hey Russ, all I was waiting for next in that <laughs> after the fight was. For Marquez to say, if he dies, dies, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's scary for Pacquiao, boy. Yeah, but, yeah, man. <laughs> Nonetheless, I got him at number five uh, in my 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 uh, top ten boxes of all time. Uh, all right. number four, Down number, to four. Yeah, number four. Um, I don't know. You might. I don't. I don't know if you'll dis- agree or disagree with me. Either way, we'll we'll debate it. Um. I put Rocky Marciano. Okay. Um, I, I put Rocky Marciano at four because, you know, going undefeated in your career is, is there's something to be said about that. Um, Rocky Marciano, I didn't, obviously I didn't see much of him. Um, I've only seen Ukrainian films of him. Right. I've, I've seen only, I've seen some footage of him. Yeah, and I've, and I've heard, yeah, right. and, and I've heard some from some boxing experts. How great he really was. So I'll take them. I'll take their word for it. Um, you know, when he fought Joe Lewis, Joe Lewis is fairly old, but he's still. What they say? What they say? Coming to America, Joe Lewis was 105. So yeah, like Joe Lewis was 160 years old when he fought him. <laughs> so I mean, Joe Lewis was old, man, when he fought when he fought Rocky. So you know, but right. I mean, you can't. It, you can only fight the talent. A lot of the guys that he fought, they were great heavyweights, but yes. they came just a little bit before him. So you, yes. you can't really blame him for the, the the talent that was there at the time. But he beat those guys. He beat Jersey Joe Walcott. Right. Um, and, and and that was a fight he was losing. He, I, I believe Walcott dropped him in yeah. that fight, and he got back up off the canvas, and he was losing most of the rounds, but he ended up knocking him out. So, I mean... Yeah, um, exactly. He, he beat Ezra Charles, you know, somebody... Yes, of, great. yes. All-time greats, you know? Yeah, that's what so, I'm saying. So, I mean, you can't take nothing away from Rocky Marciano. He's he's one yeah. of the great ones. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, he went. He, he's he's 49 and 0 with 43 knockouts. That's a hell of a ratio. Right. Um, you know, and also, given the fact that, Russ, back in those days, man, guys were fighting 15 rounds. Right, right. Three minute rounds, 15, 15 rounds, three minute, fifteen three minute rounds. That's that's unbelievable. Right. You know, so and you, uh, you got to give him credit for his chin too. I mean, because yeah, yeah, a lot of those guys could crack. And and the thing is, regardless of what age they are, the last thing you lose is your power. You know, exactly. power power remains. Um. So, All right. He he got a little bit of a chin on him too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. Yeah, he, he's my number four. Number number three is what we the guy we he fought that was 147 years old, Joe Lewis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Joe uh, knocked Lewis through the ropes, man. Yeah, he, he sure did. And, and you know, and, and of course, Joe Joe wasn't the same. Joe started smoking cigarettes after that. Right. You know, so, um, but you know, Joe Lewis was a, was just a just a thumper, a pounder. You know, what I mean, absolutely. Joe, he has hands of but brick hands, bro. You right. know, I, I've seen. You know, I'm not obviously old enough to to remember Joe fighting live, but I've seen footage. I've of seen Joe. a lot of his fights, though. Yeah. Yeah, and when he was, just, I mean, you could when he hit a guy, he, he guys just fell. Just guys just fell, man. Right. You know I mean? Guys, guys would wouldn't stay in front of him, at, you know, for a long time. You know, Joe, Joe, Joe was what 63 and three with 52 knockouts. Right. I mean, that's a hell of a ratio right there in itself. Yeah. You know. Um, Joe, I mean, Joe fought a lot of 
lot of, a lot of grimy battles with a lot of good fighter. Yeah. You know, so I, I got to I'll, I'll put him at number three because of not only how good he was, but the era he fought. Right. Uh, you know, because I and, and Russ, the reason why I keep saying that is, man, you got to give those guys credit, man. Those guys fought a lot of fights. Uh, with you know that, w- in a, a lot of rounds. Yes, yes. You know, I, I gotta give you credit for that. You have, you know, I mean, you got guys fighting fifteen, almost sixteen, and then fighting three minute rounds. Right. He, I mean, you, you you know how boxing is, man. It's 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 it, it's so like, man, it, it's so physically taxing on the body. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, and those guys fought. They fought for like 10, 15 years doing that stuff. Right. So, yeah. Uh, so Joe's my number three, bro. Um, number two, guy who just recently retired, pretty boy. I'm sorry, money, Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather. Okay. Yeah. You, I mean, I don't even have to tell you about Floyd, but I just want to know your opinion on him. I think I know what you're gonna say, but go ahead. What do I? Th- what do I think about Floyd? Yeah. What do you think about Floyd, man? I mean, I think if you. You know, when you go back to to the original idea of boxing and people say the sweet science. Yes. I think Floyd Mayweather epitomizes the sweet science. Yes. You know, um, defense, uh, uh, offense. I mean, when he was pretty boy, see, people forget this. Uh, Maybe some people don't even know, but when he was pretty boy Floyd, he was more of an offensive attacker. In fact, um, right. his, fir- his first couple fights, people he was knocking those guys out. He was knocking a lot of guys out early on in his career. And that's where a lot of his knockouts come from is early on in his career. And right. he was actually considered a knockout artist when he first started, believe it or not. You know, he was a knockout artist. And, and then when he started moving up in competition and then also moving up in weight, then the knockouts became less, you know, and he, and he started to show that, okay, I, I can, I can actually beat guys for the distance, you know, yeah. I could beat guys yeah. for the distance. So man, definitely Floyd is, is gets, I mean, I know he gets a lot of hate, but that's, that is what it is, you know, but it's, it's unwarranted. I mean, um, you could go through his career and it's like, it wasn't cherry picked, you know. No, as I, I I hear a lot of people say that's false because um, he was fighting the guys that everybody said he wouldn't fight or he couldn't beat, and then he would beat them easily, and then they would they would go to the next person. All right, you can't beat him, you know. Yeah. Like, right. it, but that's what it was, and then they, then they come back and say he cherry picked, and it's like no, he just fought the guys you said he couldn't beat. Exactly, like like name me like Cotto, like uh, yes. uh, uh, Mosley. Uh, Pacquiao, Pacquiao, yeah. Even even like um, Victor Ortiz. Victor Ortiz was on a knockout. He had dropped every fighter he fought, and and he beat um, um, Victor Ortiz beat Berto. Right, he did. No, no, no. I'm thinking about Robert Guerrero. Um, Victor Ortiz. Who was it that he beat before he fought Floyd? He beat somebody, and everybody was like, Floyd won't take the fight. He's not going to fight a young guy that's dangerous with punching power, and he fought him. He fought Canelo. You know, when everybody said... Then then when he beat Canelo, it's like, oh, Canelo was too young. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> What's going on? Exactly. Right. Y'all said he was scared to fight him. Yeah. Right. He wouldn't fight him. Same thing with Mosley. You know, they, they said, even though this footage from back in the days where Floyd was calling out Mosley, De La Hoya, all those guys. But it's funny how there is no footage of those guys back in the days when when they were on the A side, when they were known and Floyd was up and coming, they never called Floyd out. There isn't one video I've ever seen where they called him out. But he Uh called this video when after fights, they go, who do you, he called out De La Hoya and Mosley back in the days more than once, you know. And then when Mosley... When Floyd was at the top, and that's when Mosley started saying, "Oh, he he doesn't want to fight me and all this other stuff." But right. I mean, and he beat him. He beat him easily. Other than that second round, when he he, I mean, Mosley rocked him because Mosley could crack. Yeah, he rocked him. But yeah, Floyd. I mean, great, great, great fighter. You asked me what I thought about him. Definitely a great fighter. Definitely, I have no problem with him being um, number two on your list. Right. Um. 
one more thing about Floyd, another person, another fighter that a lot of people say was sort of his physical equal that everybody, you know, everybody was calling him out, say, hey, man, why don't you fight uh, Zab Judah? Why don't you fight Zab Judah? Uh, that was, a, you're right, 100% right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, Zab would have tremendous hand speed. He yes. was quick. You know what I mean? I think mean? he had quicker hands than Floyd. Slightly yeah. quicker exactly. hands than Floyd. Yeah. And Floyd beat him, too. So Right. Because <laughs> I mean, timing, timing beats speed. And exactly. Floyd, Floyd has timing in his arsenal, too, not just speed. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but yeah, so I, I got Floyd over at number two, bro. Um, all right, this is. Do I, do I need to even guess? <laughs> no, well, no, no, no. You, you might be surprised. Well, nah, no, you won't be surprised. I'm gonna go one and one. I'm gonna go one A and one B. So, I, okay, okay, because I was about to say, wow, whoever you pick, somebody's gonna be upset about it. But hey, it is what it is. <laughs> so, okay, I, I think so, I know where you're going with this one A, one B. Yeah, all right. I'm going to go with 1B first because my 1A is essentially my number one, but 1B is like, damn, he's so good. He, I got to put him, at, I got to put that number one next to his name as well. So 1B is Sugar Ray Robinson. Okay. okay. That's my 1B. Sugar uh, Ray Robinson was, to me, one of the greatest, well, probably the one or two greatest fighters I've ever seen. Um, I've seen a lot of footage of Sugar Ray Robinson. Me too. Um, I've seen documentaries on him. The boy was you. You want to talk about hand speed and and power? Oh my God! I mean, that dude had. I mean, and he was elusive too. You yes. know, Sugar Ray Robinson had a, a lot, just tremendous hand speed, great power. Um, you know, fought everybody and fought for fought for like a thousand. He fought over. He almost fought like like what like almost what? Let me see. He probably fought about two hundred fights. Yeah, you know, it, I, his record was like 173 and 19. Yeah, and at six draws, and a lot and of those had, nine, a lot of those losses came later on in his career, not early. Right, on. right, and, and Russ, he had over 108 knockouts. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, that's you want to talk about power? That dude had unbelievable power, man. Ray right. Robinson, he was the first sugar. You know what I'm saying? Yes, to, yes. You know what I mean? He was the first sweet hands, just just great skill, man. Great box, skilled boxer. I, I put him at 1B, dog, because, man, he, he was just awesome. He was just awesome. Every time I watch film and footage of him, I just marvel on how quick and fast he was, you know? And, and so, power, too. Yeah, with his, with his power. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put him at 1B. And, of course, 1A. I'm going with great Muhammad Ali. Right. Um, Muhammad not only was a great talker, but he backed every word up. Right. Um, heavyweight, he uh, you know, had tremendous. I mean, to me, when I think about Muhammad Ali, two things come to mind: um, great mental fighter, men, right. mental. Number one, that's number one, and number two unbelievable hand speed for a big a big uh heavyweight unbelievable hand speed i've never seen anybody that big with that fast of hands right you know? I, i've never i mean it must you know can you imagine how scary it is when you find a guy that big and he and you can't you and he's he's fighting you like sugar ray robinson like you know he's got the hand speed of a sugar ray robinson but he's right. got the size of a like you know of, of 240 pound six three you know, fighter. That's amazing. Yes, so, it is. So yeah, I, I, he's my number one one uh, number one A man. Um, Muhammad Ali was just. I mean, he fought everybody. He fought some 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 great 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 fights. He, I mean, he, you saw what he did to George Foreman in the 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 uh, the Thriller rumble in the, the or the rumble in the jungle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, the thriller in Manila. You saw what he did to Joe Frazier and but I mean, man. <sighs> I just got too much respect for him. So much respect for him. Um, Muhammad Ali, the, you know, to me, is the greatest boxer of all time I've ever seen. I mean, hand speed, intellect, um, just everything. Uh, uh, media savvy. Just he, he knew how to get in your head. And, 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 and Sonny, first of all, Sonny Liston. I mean, Muhammad Ali was in his 20s, in his early 20s, when he fought Sonny Liston and completely took Sonny and out of Sonny, his game. Sonny was a killer. 
Yeah, Sonny was, I mean, was, the, was the people don't realize yeah. how good Sonny Liston was. Right, and and and, and when he fought Sonny, Sonny was like you know couldn't believe what was what, what why and how Muhammad was doing what he was doing, and which completely diverted his attention from actually fighting Muhammad. Yeah. As to trying to kill him. He tried to kill Muhammad, but he he, he didn't realize, damn, I'm in a boxing match. Right. And Muhammad just 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 out outsmarted him to the point of knocking him out. Yeah, which he was... outclassed him and a lot of people, I mean, Sonny was Sonny was a terror. Like yeah. he was a straight yeah. terror. I mean, yeah. and you know, one of the most brutal heavyweights of all time was Sonny Liston. Yes. You know, yeah. he and um Ali beat him mentally before they even fought. I mean, he was he he harassed him all the way up until the fight. He was coming to his house on loud speak, right. you know, on a blow horn and and I mean just all kinds of crazy stuff he was doing to get get in his under his skin and in his head. Yeah. And, yeah. That's true. Um that's the that's my top 10 right there, Russ. Um I'm going to go ahead and give I'm going to give my a quick quick top honorable mention top uh 5. Not okay. top five, but just honorable mention five. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, in no particular order, but just just uh, you know five guys that I thought about that I didn't have in my top ten, but could easily be in my top ten. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I'm gonna start off with uh, Pernell Whitaker. Uh, he's one okay. of them. Um, Pernell Whitaker, first great defensive fighter, savvy fighter, uh, true true veteran, just just a great fighter of all time. Um, I'm gonna go with him. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go with uh, Mike Tyson. Yeah, I don't have him. In, I know a lot. Most people would have him in their top ten. I don't because right. of I, it, it's 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 kind of unfortunate because how things happen with him in his career with the allegations and the rape and the you know going to jail and all that. I think if Mike would have stayed on the straight and narrow, I think he would have been obviously. I, matter of fact, I know he would have been in my top ten because he would have been more focused. You know, Mike. Mike lost right. a lot of focus. You know, when he started, when he started being a celebrity, if you know what I mean. You know, right, right. You know, dating the the, the actress and, and and you know having different cars and the house and all that crap. So, um, he he he's uh, in my honorable mention top ten. So him, Pernell Whitaker, um, you know, uh, Roy Jones Jr. is another one. I th- I just think he's not in my top ten. Simply because I think Roy lost too many fights. Uh, he only lost eight fights, but at the same time, I think he he lost those fights, and you know he he, he didn't stop fighting. Which right. which which the the last visual I had in my head of Roy Jones was him losing you over know? and over that, again. Yeah, at yeah. the end of his career. Right, and and I know it was the end of his career, but however, it's just. You know, I I, I, no, I got some, you. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I said I definitely got you. I agree with you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Some of these guys in my top ten, I, I I'm not gonna. I didn't want to. I, I couldn't put it. I couldn't really necessarily put them over. You know. So I got Mike. I got Roy. I got I got um Sweet P. You know. Um. The other guy I got is uh, Shane Mosley. Um. I think Shane Mosley was a great fighter. Absolutely. Um, um, Shane, Shane was um, the only thing. The only, the only reason why I didn't put Shane. Well, I mean, I couldn't put Shane in my top ten because there's too many. There's just too many great fighters that right. I, don't, I I can't really see Shane. I can't put him over. Yeah, so you only got ten spots. I mean, exactly. And you, you and you squeezed eleven in those ten. So I mean, hey, you right. know, <laughs> what can you, 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 you can't right. get everybody in there. Right. So yeah. Uh, so that's the, that was that four. All right. So, so I got Shane. I got Roy. I got uh, Mike. I got um, what's the guy name? Uh, I got Shane. So I got Shane, Roy, Mike, and uh, Shane, Sugar Shane, Roy Jones, Mike Tyson. Oh, okay. And uh, Pernell Whitaker. Right. That's four. So my last one that I have, I don't know if you will agree with me on this, but I'm going to put Thomas Hearns in there. Okay. I mean, yeah, Tommy Hearns, the hitman. Yeah. 
Tommy Hearns could do it all, man. It's, I yeah. think his his weakness was gassing and chin. Yes, yes. You know, his weak that was his weakness. Gassing, yeah. <laughs> gassing and chin. But he's definitely an all time great in my book. I mean, yeah. skill skill wise, Tommy could do it all. He had a knockout punch. Yes, you he know, did. That killer right hand. He put he he face planted Durant. Durant. Yes, um, he did. And and he had a great jab. You know, I mean, he knew how to box. He could move yeah. when he had to. You yeah. know, he, he had it all. He sure did, man. Tom, Tommy, Tommy Hearn, and, and he was a long, long, rangy fighter too. You know, right. very tall right. um, for his size. Uh, yeah, so that's my Mondro mentioned top five, bro. You know that that's what I got. <laughs> Um, you know, so let, let, let's, uh, let's hear, let's hear what you got, man. Let's hear what you got. All right. I, I want to say that's a good list, man. I mean, I, I can't, that's why I love, I love hearing that, you know, boxing, boxing fans giving their top 10 because everybody's, everybody sees things differently. I mean, but, um, that's a good top 10. I can't argue. It's not like there's a fighter on there that I, I, I don't respect i'll say that you know every fighter on your list i, I have respect a level of respect for so not, not a bad list at all yeah so um i'm gonna start off the opposite way i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna give my honorable mention before i give you my 10 all right so um in no particular order either um but my my honorable mention is uh, i put archie moore Okay. You know, Archie Moore was a was a great fighter. He fought forever, you know. Right. And and just a great fighter, man. He had he could do it all. You know, he had power, he had good boxing skills, good head movement. Um, so I got Archie Moore, but he just doesn't make my top ten. And it's kinda like like you said, you can't you know, there's so many that's why you had to give the honorable mention because there's only ten spots and there's so many great fighters that you know, we've seen or, or have fought through the years. So Archie Moore is definitely right. there. Um, he deserves a top 10 spot, but it's just, I think there's 10 guys that I would put before him. Um, right. You know, so my next is one of my all-time favorites. I love watching his his um, highlights, you know, from his fights. Willie Pep. Willie Pep, uh, okay. Yeah, Willie Pep um, ah. is an honorable mention for me. Um, like I said, he's one of my favorite fighters. He's a very slick fighter. Um, could make you miss. He once won a round um, without throwing a punch. You know, very great defensive fighter, counter puncher. Yes. So good, great footwork, amazing footwork. You know, in the likes of a of a um, Pernell Whitaker and Mayweather and those type of guys. So yeah, I I, I always like watching Willie Pep. Um, you know, we got YouTube these days, so. That's how I get the we get to watch you know a lot of these guys that we weren't in their era, but their fights are still there. So it's it's new to me when I'm watching it. So it's right. like when I see it, I, I can see the skill set and everything. Right. Um, uh, another guy that I got is um, Ezra Charles. I think he was in your honorable mention. No, I don't know if he was in your honorable mention, but we talked now, about I him earlier. Him earlier. But uh, yeah, he, he he that's a good one too. Right? I yeah. almost put him in there. Um, uh, I almost put him in there, but uh, I I. You know, I, I, I swear to God, I miss one person, but, you know, I'll just say him real quick. Aaron Pryor. I'll just oh, say him. Oh, yeah. Right Aaron Pryor was another one. I mean, I missed him, too, in my honorable mention. But, yeah, he could be there, too, for me. Yeah. Um, no doubt. No Go doubt. Ahead, um, oh, I just have to... No, no, no. No, you're good. You're good. Um, Roy Jones also oh, no. is in my honorable mention. Didn't make my top ten um, for some of the same reasons you mentioned. Um I think Roy was a very talented fighter, but I think he he got by on his natural talent and a natural yeah. ability more than you know um, you know once that once his speed was gone and once that that wild wow factor of it, of um, that he had over everybody, which was his speed, right. you know once that was gone, I think he became um, beatable. I'll say. Yeah. Yes, you know, so I, I and then just kept going too long in his career, but right, right, still an all time right. great in my book. So he's he's definitely honorable mention. And then last one, I got an honorable mention, and I'm missing so many, but I can't keep going on with the honorable mention. But um, one more um, 
only guy on my list that that, that or honorable mention that never won a world title, but they wouldn't give him a shot back then. Um, Charlie Burley is one of my favorites oh. too, and you know the Black Murderers Row. Yeah, you know, he and, and so Charlie Burley was. I mean, I watched his fights. To me, I, I think he fought like he had the sh- like he did the shoulder roll back then. You know, he had yeah. that that defensive style and stance. He never got to fight, you know, um, Sugar Ray Robinson and some of the other guys. Um, he wanted to. He never they never gave him a title shot, but right. I like Burley, so that's my honorable mention. Um, so let's get into my top ten all time, starting with um, Henry Armstrong. Wow! Wait, so is that ten? Yeah, that's number ten. Okay. Henry Armstrong. All right. Yeah. Henry Armstrong, um, Hammerin' Hank, or, or Homicide Hank, whichever one yeah. you want to call him, you know. Um, but man, just a relentless fighter. Um, Aaron Pryor, you mentioned, um, kind of reminded reminds me of how Hammerin' Hank fought offensively. Yeah. Um, another one is Mosley, kind of similar. Um, but watching his old fights, that's who I saw when I watched him. And, and I mean, he was he was just relentless, man. And I mean, he won. You know, in different weight classes, three or more um, different divisions. He was featherweight champ, lightweight yeah. champ, and welterweight champ. You know, um, and he was champion for like 19, 19 different times. So yeah. the guy yeah. was just amazing um, in different weight classes. Could carry his power up with him as well. So yeah. that's my number 10, uh, Henry Armstrong. Yeah. And um, next up. I got the middleweight um, before all of the great middleweights we talk about, but I, I got Harry Greb. Wow. Yeah, the the Pittsburgh windmill. Um, yeah. I, I I got Henry Greb. Um, he was a not only a middleweight um, champion, but also a light heavyweight champion as well. Um, he fought like almost three hundred fights, you know, wow. in his career. <laughs> you know. Holy. Jesus. <laughs> started his career at 140 pounds and ended at light heavyweight. So, I mean, the guy was just amazing. One right. of the greatest um, middleweights and greatest fighters of all time, in my opinion, it, um, Harry Greb. Um, mm-hmm. Next up at eight, I'm, I'm staying in the middleweight division and I'm going with um, Carlos Ma- Ma- Malzone. Carlos Malzone. Yeah, that's that's... That's that's who I got at eight. Um, arguably, right in. By the way, just curious. Um, my zone. Yeah. Uh, he fought like in the sixties. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So sixties okay. and on. So I mean, he he was a a, a great middleweight champion. Um, he he was the undisputed middleweight championship for seven years. You know, I think it was um his record that that um Bernard Hopkins broke. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Actually. That's, I, remember, I think that's Hopkins a, broke his record for yeah. holding the title the longest and Hagler actually wanted to break that record, but I don't think he did. I don't think he did, but he wanted to break that. He was going for for Monzon's record. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so one of the greatest middleweights, uh, many feel he was the greatest middleweight, but that could right. be argued. Um, so I got Carlos Monzon. Um, next, I got who I believe is the greatest middleweight of all time, um, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Okay. At, at we, number seven. Huh? <laughs> we can agree on that. We can yeah, agree on that. I, I think Hagler is the greatest. I, I think it would have been, man, to, to see Hagler and, and Monzon fight would have been amazing. Yeah. But, I mean, of course, they're not in the same era, but. It right. would have just been amazing because of their styles. They had similar, you know, styles, and somebody was going to get knocked out in that fight. Right. You know? But I, I think Hagler would have beaten him, um, in my opinion. Um, so we we talked about Hagler already when you yeah. had him on your your top ten. Yeah, I, I had him at six on mine. Yeah, I got him at seven. Okay. So it's, yeah. it's fairly yeah, okay. It's fairly close on that one. Okay. Yeah, I got him on seven on my list. Um, coming in at number six. Uh, I'm going to go to the heavyweight division, and I got Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis, number six. Wow. At number six on my list. Um, 
Joe Lewis was was you know one of the greatest heavyweights. He was a uh, he was the face of the black community, you know, yes. in his era. Um, after you know Jack Johnson and all those guys, he was the first black heavyweight since uh, heavyweight champion since Jack Johnson. Because after Jack Johnson, they wouldn't allow it. Um, yeah. And that's why if you watch any of Joe Lewis's old fights, he wasn't allowed to celebrate after knocking a, a, a Caucasian guy out, you know. Yeah, I he would just that. walk back to his Yeah, he would just walk back to his um, corner, whereas Jack Johnson was, was a trash talk. I mean... Yeah, he's, yeah he was. Yeah, he, he, was. He, was a total, he was the total opposite of that, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Joe Lewis, I got him on a list. Like we talked about him when you you had him on your list. Yeah. Um, knockout artist, and I know you had him at three. I got him at six. Yeah. yeah. Um. So next up, we staying in the heavyweight division, and this is where it's gonna get controversial. <laughs> here. Uh oh. Number five on my list of mm-hmm. the all time greatest fighters is Muhammad Ali. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. hold on, hold on. <laughs> I told you, this is where hold it's going to get controversial. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> number five? You got, yeah, I, you got I, the I got great Muhammad Ali at number five. I got him at five. Explain at yourself, five. sir. Explain well, yourself. Well, I mean, I think that Muhammad Ali was, was definitely um, the most unique heavyweight that I've ever seen um, for you mentioned some of it, but he was a heavyweight that fought like, um, like a middleweight, you know, a welterweight. Yeah. He fought Absolutely. like a welterweight, you know? Yeah. And he, he patterned his fight style after um, Sugar Ray Robinson. Cause he was a he big did. fan of Sugar Ray Robinson. Um, yeah. So if people wonder, you know, Ali always, you saw him always backpedaling. Yep. Staying, staying on his toes, backpedaling, and he could, you know, he could, he could hurt you going backwards, which is very right. different for, but it's not normal in boxing, nope. you know, to go backwards and to be able to hurt a guy. You know, most people can't fight going backwards, right? You know, and but he he practiced that, you know, because of growing up watching Sugar Ray Robinson, and he ended up perfecting that, and and you know. He even threw a lot of his punches like Sugar Ray Robinson, like that uppercut. Um, so I think he was a great, great fighter. I got him at five on my list. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's just because a lot of people got him at one on okay. their list. So um, I think that's why it's going to be controversial. Yeah. yeah. And, and like I said, if if – if people put Ali at one, that doesn't bother me at all. You know, like I don't, I don't, that doesn't bother me because I think he was that great. You know? Right. Right. So this is just a, it's not like a knock on him for real. Um, right. It's just where I got him on the list. Okay. Um, you know, there were some, there were some flaws too with Ali's um, fight game. It was. You know, um, you know, he kept his hand, his right hand down pretty low. Yeah. Um, didn't protect his chin, but uh, he could get away with that against most because yes. of his speed, his his alertness, and and he did that. But that first fight against Frazier, that's that's why he lost that fight. Because yeah. that left hook, he never defended it. Never and, did. And Frazier <laughs> trained you know, the the one of my greatest trainers at boxing, Eddie Futch, um yeah. was was um Frazier's trainer and he trained, he he watched film on Ali and noticed that. Right. And and notice that Ali would not drop his hand, uh, would not put, bring that right hand back up. So yeah. he trained Frazier to to know to know the keys of when to throw that left hook, and he that did. it would always be there. And that's why Ali ate so many of those left hooks in the in the first fight. Yeah, and I mean he put, he put and, Ali and down with one of those with, with a left hook. Yeah, and broke his jaw, you know, in that yeah. fight. And uh, but Ali in the other two fights. He still took a few left hooks, but yep. he was more prepared for it, and he was able to, you know, to um, overcome it and, and neutralize it enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Frazier still had his moments, but Ali neutralized it enough where he was still, he was going to win the fight. So yeah. um, Ali, all-time great. Like I said, if he's definitely my top five. Um, 
Maybe I could have made him higher. I don't know, but that's where I got him when I made my list. I got him at five. Okay. Um, so next up, coming at number, number four. four, I got um, Sam Lankford. Sam Lankford? Yes. Okay. Who the was Boston, this guy and when did the, he the, fight? The Boston Terror and the, and, the, and the Boston Bone Crusher, as they used to call him. Oh. You know, um, he was from Canada. Uh, the wow. black guy, black guy from Canada, and um, you know he fought back with Jack Johnson days. Mm -hmm. um, this guy, uh, you got to watch some of his film. I mean, he he fought at lightweight, welterweight, middleweight, light heavyweight, all of that. Wow. Um, and he fought back then also, um, partially through the era of Sugar Ray Robinson when Sugar Ray Robinson was coming up as well. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, a lot of people feel they could have fought at, at one time when he was at, um, you know, when he was at the lower weight classes, when he fought at yeah. middleweight. But yeah. that that fight never happened. But um, right. the guy had um, 256 fights, 180 wins, you know what I mean? 128 knockouts. Um, wow. Was just, just a, a very skillful fighter for a heavyweight. You know, he, he had good head movement. He could mm -hmm. make you miss. He could counter punch. Just a really good boxer for at, for those times. And when I watch his, you know, when I watch his film, I always marvel at it, like his skill set. And yeah. I, I kind of try to picture him how he would have done against in other eras. And I, I think he would been he would have been a problem for any era, like any era. Yeah. You know, because yeah. because he was that skilled, that good of a fighter. Um, he did fight Jack Johnson. Um. And I'm trying to think. I think they fought twice or maybe only once. And Jack Johnson beat him in a decision by decision, but they never fought again. And, like, I think Langford wanted to fight him again. But that was a tough fight for Jack Johnson back in the day. So I got Sam Langford there. That's not, that's my number four. Okay. Yeah. Um, coming in at number three is who I was just mentioning, Jack Johnson. One of my okay. one of my all time he's also on my all time favorite list of okay. fighters. And actually, um Muhammad Ali, um well, he was one of his favorite fighters too, towards when but this is after Ali was already Ali. He was already champion. And he uh. went and watched a movie about Jack Johnson and found out about his life. And Ali was like I think quoted and said, um, he said, he said, I'm a bad man. He said, but he was the baddest. Yeah. Like, because Jack Johnson was Floyd Mayweather. I'm not talking about weight class. I'm just saying how he was as champion. Right. Yes. It, you know, he was a defensive fighter. Um, you know, could could box, had skills, mm -hmm. would would make you pay. And he was doing this in the in the back in the days, like in the early 1900s, this is when black people he was parading around with um, the most flashiest suits, mm -hmm. the the fanciest cars back then. Even white women. White women. I mean, yeah. you know, that's why Ali was like, this dude was <laughs> was no joke. But I, I love <laughs> watching him fight because you know there was fights where he would hold guys up. He he he'd have them ready to go and he'd hold them up to keep the fight going on. Yeah, yeah. You know, just, I mean, just, <laughs> just Jack Johnson was just uh, amazing to me. Savage. He, yeah. he was absolutely, he was a bad boy, man. I saw, yeah. I've seen like, footage of him. I mean, he was, he was just a, a just, I mean, he had like hands, a, a granite hand, bro. Right, right. And he, like you said, he'd knock you out and keep you up so he can keep pounding on you. you right. Know what I'm saying? And it's the white guys, like, and you know, back yeah. then they hate him. That's that's where the whole great white hype comes from, yeah. Because they tried to get the, uh, uh, it was the heavyweight champion who was before Jack Johnson, and he retired undefeated. Mm -hmm. Um, and Jack Johnson had beaten everybody, and there was nobody left. And they got this guy to come out of retirement and, and fight Jack Johnson, and Jack Johnson knocked him out too. Right. Right. And you know, so that's where the great white hype thing comes from um also like i said after jack johnson they didn't allow another black heavyweight until joe lewis which was like 20 years later, years later you know right. and um 
the interesting thing, you know, Joe Lewis was was the, the total opposite of what Jack Johnson was, you know. Yeah. So he was quiet, you know, more, you know, more reserved. Yeah. But then, quiet, you know, yeah. yeah. And then, like, like just about twenty years later, you got another Jack Johnson that came, which was Muhammad Ali, because he was not right. quiet. <laughs> so, you know. So yeah. it's interesting, but I got Jack Johnson at three, man. He's like I said, he's one of my yeah. favorites. Um, his skill set was amazing for that time. Yeah. Um, you know how he could he could make you miss, counter punch you. You know, um, he had all the tricks of the trade uh, of of the sweet science. And he was a pretty and big too. <laughs> pretty big guy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Pretty yeah. big guy, and um, number two. So I'm down to my two. Two, okay. And I've already got Ali out the way. All right. So um, I got Sugar Ray Robinson at number two. Wow, man, you got, wow. You got my one and one A at your number two. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Five, respectively. So that, I mean, okay, all right. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm all ears, bro. Go ahead. I, I got Sugar Ray Robinson at two. Um, Sugar Ray Robinson... When I watch his fights, you know, the the footage that we have him, I wish we had more footage of him when he was at welterweight. Yeah. You know, we don't yeah. have enough at welterweight, but we get a lot of his middleweight years um, yeah. that we see. But I've seen some also some some younger footage, not long footage, but some younger footage of him when he was fighting in the Olympics and all of that, you know, coming up. So mm -hmm. the guy was just, I mean, just a phenom. And, yeah. and, and like you already talked about his record and, you know, the – the knockouts that he had, I mean, it, it's amazing. Um, yes, absolutely. And I, the thing I liked about his style was those uppercuts. He threw a lot of uppercuts. If you watch his film, going backwards, he he knocked guys out because he would throw so many uppercuts. Yes. You know, like like they would be uh, they would come from under, and you see Ali took that punch, and you would see Ali do that going yeah. backwards, and he'll stop and plant, yeah. and then just throw an uppercut, but. I mean, Sugar Ray Robinson did it relentlessly, and he would tag guys. I mean, going backwards and and floor them. He he could knock you out with either hand. He killed a guy in the ring, you know. Yeah, yeah. He killed he killed a guy in the ring, and he had a dream about it before the fight that he was going to kill the guy. And everybody said, "Oh, it's just a dream. It's just a dream." And he ended up killing the guy, you yeah. know. And, and that that messed him up too. Like he wasn't. I mean, he still went on and fought and was still Sugar Ray Robinson, but, yeah. you know, that that really kind of messed him up, though, you know, yeah. that he, he ended up killing the guy, especially since he dreamed about it ahead of time. Yeah. But, yeah, that's my number two, man. Sugar Ray Robinson, definitely there. And um, number one, I mean, who do you think it is? <sighs> number one. Um, wow. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna, I'll go on a limb and say... Now let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What era did this guy fight in? This number one uh, guy. If I give you that, you're gonna know it. Okay. Um, I tell you, give me a hint. What weight class? Uh, this guy started. He started down at 130 and fought all the way up to 154. Hmm. It was the heaviest he ever fought. Wow. Started his career at 130, and and he didn't end it at 154, but the highest he ever fought was 154. Roberto Duran? No. Nah. Right, let me but get that, one more. But he falls, one. he falls under that category, though. <laughs> he, he started at, the, I believe Roberto did start at 130 and went, but I think Roberto even, I think Roberto even went higher than 154, I think. I right. thought he fought at one. Yeah, he fought Hagler at 160. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me get one more try at it. Let me get one more crack at it. Uh, wow, man, I don't know. You got me on that one, bro. All right. You got? Well, talk about controversy. You know, should I give my email out now so they can know where to send the hate mail? Yeah, you might as well want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Who you got, bro? Who you got? Number one, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, 
I struggled with putting him at number one as well. He remember he was my number two. Right, right. So I mean, yeah, a lot of like, you're right. You are gonna get a lot of hate mail uh, yeah. <laughs> for I that because think. people just simply hate this guy. Um, I don't know why. I think he's an all absolute all time great. Um, yes. You know, I, I think Floyd Mayweather. You know, I, I want to say, I, I think he revolutionized the game of boxing. When I when I say that, I mean he after after Purnell Whitaker retired. Yes. Um, Floyd May, you know, there there was a time there when guys were just knocking each other out, not just right. being a lot of offensive fighters, a lot of them. Right. But Floyd, Floyd, Floyd. I guess I, I don't know. I, I, I want to say uh, Pernell Whitaker re- reincarnated, right? You know, with Floyd Mayweather. But man, listen, I, I love defense. I love I, I love watching boxing because of its people. The, the, the guys are special. Their skill sets and everything. And yes. Floyd had it for us. Yeah, that's why he's undefeated because he has everything you need, right? To be a you know a, a, a boxer and, and the word boxing. And you, if you look up the word boxing as it defines in, in sports, as, as a relative to sports, Floyd is the atypical boxer. Yes. You know, I mean, the, the boy, you want know, defense, offense, movement, angles, uh, quickness, speed, uh, mental uh, uh, capacity to. And to, it's that to, mental capacity that I think it puts him above everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so go, yeah, I, I, I want me to keep going on. on no, 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 no. I, I mean, we already, I already talked about Floyd when you were doing your list, and so no, this is absolutely my. Yeah, go I mean, ahead. You know, people are going, oh man, he's boring. He's he he doesn't get hit. I mean, are you you got to be kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when somebody, you know, it drives me nuts when somebody says, well, he doesn't get hit. What do you expect? And, you and what they got to exactly, and what they got to understand is like. Do you realize that he's fighting against professional fighters, guys who've been fighting since they were like seven, right? And, and are trained to punch you, to, to hit you. You know right. what I mean? They're trained to do this, and right. and, and so so to say that the guy doesn't get hit is a compliment in my eyes, not a not a um, a knock. You see what Absolutely. I mean? Like that's not a knock. That's that's amazing. You right. know what you're right. watching to see a guy stand right in front of another guy and he can't hit him and when you and these guys that he he's fighting when they fought other guys they never experienced that before oh. where they just couldn't hit a guy right then they get gun shy and people always say well why isn't this guy throwing as many punches as he normally does when he's fighting Flo- when now that he's fighting Floyd and it's because exactly. if you keep getting countered he he makes these guys start thinking and, and you know what uh, you know what Russ Case in point, remember when he fought Manny Pacquiao? Yes. What did I just say about? I ha- By the way, I have him in my top five. He's right. my top five. And Manny Pacquiao throws His output is a lot. Yeah, a lot of punches. And 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 what do you know? All of a sudden, he fights Floyd Mayweather. Oh my God, Manny Pacquiao's throwing. He's averaging at least only like thirty punches yeah. around. Are you kidding me? Yeah. He wasn't letting his hands. He couldn't let his hands go because his hands it's go. a hard. Yeah, it's hard when you keep missing back. and then getting countered. Yes, yes. Yeah. Listen, you know, and, and I try to tell people this too. Like, okay, if you're a boxer, you're in there with Floyd Mayweather. You think you're gonna just swing at him? Well, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Just keep, just keep punching. You'll hit him. All right. If you keep punch, trying to punch him, and you keep missing, and then you keep getting hit right in your mouth or every time you swing. And those are the ones you don't see coming, and those hurt the most. <laughs> yes, exactly. So you're gonna, it's gonna neutralize. You're just gonna say, okay, well, right. then, then you're gonna start thinking, hmm, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I try to my left hook, I might get a a, a right cross right. in my, you know what I'm saying? You and now he's thinking. got you where he wants you. Exactly. Once you he's start thinking you. like that, he's got you where he wants you. Where he wants you, exactly. Bingo. You know, I mean, hell, I, I matter of fact, speaking of Victor Ortiz earlier when you were talking about when he fought Victor Ortiz, Floyd was in there. Talking to people in the stands, right? Who's fighting Victor Ortiz? Like, who? Who you? Who you? At one point, he asked a guy, "Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl?" When right, he's fighting, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I saw. 
listen, like you said about my well, my list, dude. I don't I don't care. Uh, my if you're number one, Floyd Mayweather, I have no issues with it at all. Right, right, at all. And that's why I like like I've heard other people's lists where it's like they got people on their top ten where I might not have put that person in my top ten or I didn't think about that person, but then. It's always interesting to hear when I when I hear different top tens, you know, people, for, especially with boxing, because there's been so many great ones and so many different eras. So I, I, like I said, it was it was I was excited listening to your list to hear who you were gonna pick, you know, next. And like I mean, Sugar Ray Robbins is I mean Sugar Ray Leonard is my all time favorite fighter, and I I, I feel like I, I betrayed him by not putting him in my top ten, you know. What I mean? <laughs> Right, and I right. didn't even mention him in my. Uh, there's another honorable mention. I didn't even mention him. You know, that, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. That, no, that's I, how many great fighters that, that yes. there've been. You know, um, but not, those are my guys. Um, rest in peace to, to um, Sweet Pea too. Yeah, he, man. We, we were talking about him earlier. Yeah, I mean Floyd. Floyd sparred him when Floyd was coming up. You know. Yeah, he did. He did. He, he sparred him, man. From from what the boxing circles say, from what I heard, that he he gave. Purnell a lot of trouble, a young Floyd, you know, this is before he became pro, a pro, mm-hmm. you know, he and, was like, and he would tell was a you teenager. Too, right, Floyd would tell you, Floyd said he learned a lot from Purnell Whitaker. From Purnell Whitaker, yeah, you know? when they, when they spar- those sparring sessions, yeah. Exactly, you know, his defensive stance, his his, his uh, head movement, his shoulder right. shoulder rolls, you know what I'm saying, and you know, on, on top of that too, Russ, not only was it just skill, but a lot of that stuff is just pure athleticism. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Just naturally gifted, how 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 quick you are to react, yeah. and, and, right. you know, to, to different types That's, of punches and stuff. That, so. he, I mean, his dad was training him from the time he was three. Like they yeah. said, he was three years old and was punching doorknobs, using them as like the the um, speed bag. You know what I mean? Using doorknobs when he could reach the doorknob, he was using their speed bags. I mean, come on, it's it's he probably can't remember when he couldn't box. You know what I mean? It's like. It's it's a reason why he's that he was that good. His his skill set was that good. Yeah, you know? that, that, that's true. That's so, true. That's, that's my true. list. That's my top ten, man. I mean, I think we both did pretty good. Yeah, you did a good job on that, really, because yeah. I mean, you mentioned some guys that just do deserve mentioning from back in the you know from yeah. in the early, early days of of boxing. Right. Um, you know, guys like like Henry Armstrong and Jack right. Johnson. You know, right. those guys, you know, you, you got to include them, man, because those guys fought battles, wars, right. I mean, 15 rounds. I, I, right. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. So, I, I yeah. think we did. Yeah, uh, when, you were, when you were saying that, when you were going through your list, I was like, yeah, that's, I mean, you got, you kept saying, you got to give respect to these guys who were back in the days who were fighting 15 rounds or more. And, and I mean, those guys were, that that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. I mean, just imagine you, you're a boxer and you're, and you're, I mean, hell, nowadays guys fight 12 rounds and they're gassed. They're gassed by the fifth, by the fifth round. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So absolutely, man. Um, yeah. Another yeah, honorable like mention of Jack Dempsey. I mean, there's so many I, that we didn't, yeah. you know, but, but even though between the two of our lists, we covered some really good fighters though. I mean, True. from between the two of our lists. So you know, there's only ten spots, people, that we had to pick. So don't get upset. Just do your list. What's your top ten? Right. You know? Right. And and also tell them not to hate on Floyd Mayweather because that boy. Yeah. I mean, That's gonna happen anyway. I mean. Yeah. Hate I, I, him anyway. they hate him already. Yeah. yeah they they hate him. Gonna, they'll say Pacquiao had a hurt shoulder or whatever. You know. Yeah. But yeah, they'll, they'll say Oscar De La Hoya was over the hill and. Yeah. That nonsense. But he so. wasn't over the hill when Pacquiao beat him. Yeah, right, exactly. Right, right. It's like, come on. Afterward, people. exactly. Right. <laughs> you know, so it's just pure he, hate. He waited. He waited till Pacquiao was old, but that Pacquiao is still fighting now, and and he's not old anymore. It's like what, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he's beating Thurman, so it's like he waited till he was old. Okay. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't make sense, man. I mean, I give Pacquiao all the props, and and Pacquiao is could be an honorable mention for me. I mean, I think he's grown on me through the years, and I think he's a uh, definitely an all time great. Yeah, and all, yeah, he, he he can be on somebody's top ten. So I know the Pacquiao fans are gonna hate me because I made Floyd one, and I didn't put Pacquiao on my top ten. 
But <laughs> it's not because I don't like Pacquiao. It's just there's just too many great fighters. It's, yeah, you that's know? true. And, and 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 listen, I have him in my top ten because yeah. I, I I think he's that great of a fighter. And I'm right. you know what really impresses me about Pacquiao was he's fighting. He's beating guys like that are noticeably just just by the the, the the eye test itself noticeably bigger than him. Right. You know. So you know, I mean that that's in itself is very impressive. And he's a, he's a heck, of, heck of a boxer. You can punch. Heck of a fighter, out, yeah. Quick, you know. So yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, yeah. just remember though, my my favorite fight of all time didn't make my top ten list. You know, so exactly. it's not a hate against Pacquiao that I didn't put him in the list. If you got Pacquiao at number one in your list, some people might even have him at number one on their list. That's fine with me. That's, right. that's how you see it. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, that those are some good lists, man. I, I think we did good with that. So. What's the next segment? Are we what are we doing next? All right. Well, we're gonna do this segment called, you know, if I were, I would. Um, yeah. And if I were, meaning fill in the blanks. So basically, Russ, what's gonna happen is we're gonna, you know, we're gonna. I'll do five, and you'll do five. We'll go with, uh, you know, like either it can be five. Since we're a sports show, we're gonna do five athletes or you know something okay. relative to sports. So. Most, you know, mostly we're going to do individuals. Like if I were blank, blank, if I was LeBron or if I was, right. you know, I like that, right. you know, or you can do an, indiv- you, you can do an organization. If I were right, Dallas Cowboys, I would, you know what I'm saying? Be America's team. So, <laughs> or not, please. I'm not going to start that again. <laughs> <laughs> be America's team. Yeah, because you're not already. So you're, you're right. You're, oh, here we go. Could be, but you're not. So, okay. So I can right, assume. Right. Coming. <laughs> <laughs> you set yourself up for that, one, bro. Right, right. <laughs> um, so okay, I, well, I I'll go ahead and start it off, man. I'll, I'll okay. I'll go. You know, I'll say if I were, and then you give me whatever athlete or you know whatever team, or whatever, and uh, I'll I'll elaborate on it. Okay. So, <clears throat> with that said, here I go. All right. If I were Simone Bowles, I would continue on being the best gymnastics athlete in the world, and I would. I, if I was Simone Biles, I would, I would, I would maximize my fame. I would. I would, I would, I, I would, I mean, I would do commercials. I would go on shows. I would do movies and all that kind of stuff. Because guess what? When you're done with gymnastics, if based on what history has told us about gymnastics, athletes, they, they kind of fade out into, you know, in, into society. I mean, right. you, you know, uh, you can go, what, Mary Lou Retton, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, for example, uh, Jair. Right. Jair Lynch, yes. a, a bunch of bunch of you know really good successful you know uh, Dominique uh, Dawes, Dawes, right? Dominique, all you know. You, I mean, you would think that Dominique has more to offer life or you know you know the world of 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 athletics than just doing what she did and then kind of calling the quits, you know? Right. Uh, so if I were if I were Simone Biles, I would maximize my fame. That's okay. what I would. Right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. So here's my other one. That's number. Two. That's number one. Number two. If I would, if I were, I'm sorry. If you were Anthony Joshua, I would stop buying into the hype of me being Anthony Joshua. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would, if I was Anthony, Anthony Joshua, I would focus on boxing, stop listening to media and, 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 and people putting stuff in my ear, Fo- focus on your next opponent, no matter who it is, no matter what people say it is, you focus on that next opponent and you do what you need to do to beat that next guy, which is John Ruiz. Focus right. on John Ruiz. Go back to the drawing board. Focus on him, and 
be, I guess my, the theme of that for, for him would be, dude, just focus, man. Right. Focus on the task at hand. Forget about what everybody's saying. I mean, there's, I just heard something the other day. He's, he's cursing out Lennox Lewis. Yeah. To some outlet talk about Lennox Lewis is a clown. I, I, right. I, people are trying to compare me to Lennox Lewis. Focus on your, who you're fighting, bro. Right. Okay. Focus on John Ruiz. Cause guess what? He knocked your ass out. Right. Pretty good. And, you know, now, now your career is in shambles because of this one fight. You right. got a chance to, to, to redeem yourself. Focus on your redemption song. Focus on Mr. Ruiz and go get that win. So, yeah. uh, uh, Anthony Joshua, if I were Anthony Joshua, I would stay focused on my opponent. Right. What do you think? I, I agree. I mean, I definitely agree with, with that stance. I mean, you know, Lennox, I'll just say this. Lennox is um, a former fighter, former heavyweight champion, an all-time great. And mm-hmm. um, now he's not. he's a retired fighter. And he commentates fights. Right. So he's paid to give his opinion on fighters of today. It's not hating. It's his job now. You know, so whatever he's saying about you is his opinion. Exactly. Like you said, pay attention and focus on on your career and John Ruiz, not not on Lennox Lewis. So. Right. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Um, All right. Number three. If Um, I were. DeMarcus Cousins. I would be humble and rehab the hell out of my my knee and what other other injury I got. And, you know, first of all, stay humble, rehab the hell heck out of it, come back hard, and don't be a distraction to your team and just work hard and come back and, 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 and and uh, kind of like John Ruiz, I mean, uh, what's his name? Anthony Joshua. Just focus on what you got to do. You know, don't worry about, you know, what everybody's saying and get, keep your head out of the, uh, the news cycle and right. work hard and, and, and get back to at least at least a quarter of what you what you were when you when you were, you know, playing with New Orleans and, you know, when you were playing uh, with the uh, Sacramento King, you know, get get back to what got you there. Right. Thing. DeMarcus Cousins. If I were DeMarcus Cousins, I would focus on getting back to what got me to to being that 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 number one overall pick. That you know that dominant big man. Right. You know. So I would focus on that if I were DeMarcus Cousins. Right. Yeah. What do you think about that? What do you, yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, that's that's pretty good. I agree. I can't disagree on any of that. Um, so yeah, I, I can't disagree. I agree. That's that's exactly what he needs to do. Yeah. All right. Number four. <clears throat> if I were, if you were Josh Gordon. Uh, again, same same scenario. <laughs> focus. <laughs> focus. Focus on the task at hand, bro. Focus on trying to get better. Focus right. on. Learning the offense, you, you you got lucky. Roger Goodell, you know, reinstated you. You 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 you. you I mean, he Josh Gordon has got nine lives, bro. He's a cat. Yeah, He's called yeah. a cat boy. Right, right. He has so many chances. You right. know, I can't remember a guy that had that many chances. Right. Exactly. You know, and and he's got so many chances, and and he's got another one coming up. So he's just got to stay focused, man. Forget about. The substances. Forget about who you're hanging around. Just stay right. focused. Just stay focused on playing well. Play, working, you know, going to work every day. Get your lunch pail. Go to work every day and bust your tail. You're working with the greatest quarterback, arguably the greatest quarterback in the league. You're working with arguably the greatest head coach in the league. You're on a winning team. You know they're gonna win. You're you're you can be a big part of that team's dominance. You know so. I would if I'm Josh if I were Josh Gordon I would stay focused on on, on playing a full season with the New England Patriots. Right. Yes, that's what I would do if I were Josh Gordon. Now, number five. If number I were. Five. If I were. Okay. 
if you were Jerry Jones? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to throw a curveball in there. Oh, my God. If I was Jerry Jones, I would sell the team. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. Go ahead. I would sell the team <laughs> and, and go Seriously? join. I would sell. Hold on. And you asked me. You 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 you're the one that put it right, there. Right. So if I were Jerry Jones, I would sell the Dallas Cowboys and move <laughs> and and, <laughs> and move <laughs> to Southern California in, in in the red light district and become a porn star. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you sure you're not talking about Robert Kraft? <laughs> I'm positive. <laughs> Jerry Jones has has been quoted. Oh yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He, I, I don't trust me. I know, I know. He, <laughs> you know. I mean, the the last time Jerry Jones said something. Oh, I can think about when he said, "I want me some glory hole." So I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we already know what glory hole is. Obviously, yeah, Jerry, Jerry's been caught um, outside of his marriage a few times. So yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> So yeah, if I was Jerry Jones, honestly, honest, no, no, you know, I was explaining. I was, I know he's not gonna sell a team, so I was joking. But right. honest, if I were Jerry Jones, I would let, I, I would own the team, and I would let the general manager be the general manager. I would let the head coach be the head coach, and I would let the uh, head coach coach the players, and let the operations. You know, I would let whoever whoever I hired to run the organization run the organization. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, I would leave the football side of things alone. I'll be an owner. And I'll be there if, if my team needs me to write some checks or whatever. But, <laughs> you know, but I would be an owner only because that's what he is, an owner. So that's what I would do if I were Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones is a great owner. He is. You know, you, 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 you guys... I'm gonna say you guys, you know, the Dallas Cowboys, you guys don't have no problems with acquiring picks and playing and paying players. So, you know, I I would just own the team. I was I would leave the the the, the football side of it out, out of it. I would leave the football side out of it. That's okay. what I would do. Jones. Okay. And also one, one more thing that I would do if I was Jerry Jones. I know he's just joking. I saw this the other day. He said. Somebody asked him, you know, what, what, what are we going to do about Zeke? He says, Zeke who? And, uh, you know, that's going viral now. So, yeah, just, that's, that's, I know, right now that's a big topic. But that's what I mean, Russ. The it was drama. A joke. The I mean, it was, it, was, it was a joke. You know what I, I mean? Know. It was, they, it was on the field after their last game, preseason game, when they beat the, um, who was it that they just played? Um, was it the uh, was it the 49ers? No, no, the Rams. I'm sorry. The Rams, yeah. It was the Rams in Hawaii. And yeah. after the rookie running back Pollard, you know, had a pretty decent game, mm -hmm. they had been asking him about um they had asked him about Pollard. So right. he just made a joke and said, you know, Zeke who? You know, right. you know, right. after after it was a joke. But right. you know, the media's because it's the Cowboys, they're gonna run with that, you know, they're gonna run with that. And Apparently not I'm saying Ezekiel Elliott didn't find it funny or, you know. Right. But, but yeah, okay. It, it, but it's, if I was Jerry Jones, I would just, I would just be an owner, man. I would, right. I, would, I would hire a general manager, let them manage the team and, you know, let the coach coach the team. So that's what I would right. do if I was Jerry Jones. Gotcha. So what do you think about that? Um, I think he already does that. I just think it's, uh, He's the face of the franchise, and but I, I think um, most of the power has been relinquished from him. He still makes, he still um, has a say, but really his son Stephen Jones um, and Will McClay is the real GM. I mean, they're the and, and Jason Garrett. You know, those three, those are the three that are really running that t that organization, and it's been like that for years. It's just that, you know, Jerry likes the camera, you know, right. so. Because he's always the one, and you don't see Steven or Jason doesn't, you know, they call him the hand clapper. So people don't really don't even know his personality. Right. And, and and Will McClay, nobody even knows who he is because people don't even realize he's a black guy, you know. But um, so, you know, so Jerry is the face of the franchise. So people still think he's the one 
making all the decisions, but really he has say, and that's that's because he's he's the owner. But Stephen, his son, his, his, they run the show. Stephen, Will McClay, Jason Garrett, they really run the team now. You know, they really run the team now. So it, it is what you're saying. That is what's going on really already. It's just that Jerry likes the camera, so he likes being the face. So they let him go be the face. He mm-hmm. likes being with the media, you know. Okay, so so the Cowboys' face of the franchise is is their owner. Yes. Okay, that's that's unbelievable. All right, well, um, <clears throat> let's switch <forget. laughs> <laughs> It's your turn, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. If I was, um, if you were. The Lakers. <laughs> if I was the Lakers, uh-huh. Lakers organization, I would get prepared for um, winning a lot of games and and adding. If I was the Lakers organization, I would have LeBron James play point guard. I would have the the players that we've got. I think I would be celebrating right now because. I think we have the uh, a formidable team, and I would continue to add a few more pieces in there, especially now that DeMarcus Cousins is is injured. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe this talks about Joe Kim Noah coming, and I would sign him as well because um, you still have JaVel McGee. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that he's you know uh, he's the the greatest center of all time, of course, JaVel McGee, but He's still a big man, and that that really offsets, um, you know, Anthony Davis. So I will continue adding pieces to that team and try to um, get back to prominence and and being who the Lakers have have been for years and years in in professional basketball. Okay. All right. Sounds sounds like a reasonable uh, request, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so next. If I was. If you were. Um, I'm going to go out and say. If you were Kirk Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if I was Kirk Cousins. I would go ahead and. Make the profits predictions come true and win the NFC North this oh, year, oh. and stick it to all of these ungrateful Viking fans out there. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> 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 nah, but if if I was Kirk Cousins, I would prepare for this season. Um, forget about last season, and I would prepare for this season harder i mean 10 times harder than i've ever prepared for any other season i would have the offense down i would be the leader you know um and as regardless of what the media says or what anybody else is saying about me i would definitely um take control and let as long as my and have my teammates see me as that leader right and lead them to winning that division. So that's where my mind state would be on nothing but game after game, winning games, winning big games, you know, beating the Packers, beating the Bears, you know, um, showing up in the big games when it counts in the biggest moments. Um, you know, I, I I would channel that Kirk Cousins that, you know, started the, the what was it? What did he say that time? You like that? You know, I, he needs to bring that Kirk Cousins back. You know, you like that? Because that was a big game. He did, you know, he played well in that game. So that yeah. that's what he need, that's what I would do if I was Kirk Cousins. You know, okay. and show people that I was worth the money that the Vikings gave me. Okay. All right. That was a good one, actually. I, I love that explanation. That was pretty darn good. I must admit. 
I hope I hope I hope that that he lives up to that. Me, me being a Vikings fan, you know. So we'll see what happens with that. Don't worry, I've already predicted it. It's gonna happen. Oh, okay, all right. Well, well the profit. Oh, the profit. That's why I forgot about that. Um, if okay, I was, profit. what's that? I said, if I was. If he was. Um, if I were. If, if you were, um, Errol Spence Jr. I'm knocking somebody. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's what he wants to do. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But if I was Earl Spence Jr., um, I would be training right at this moment. I would be training very hard to get prepared for Sean Porter. Um, I would go forward with my plans and, and um, you know, prepare my game plan for – for an aggressive come forward fighter that tries to make it ugly and rugged, I would use my jab um, to keep him at bay and stick him with um, with the one two. After my jab, follow it up with the with the um, with the left hand, and then after I defeat him, you know, and I would also pivot. I would move, you know, just slight movements. Um, keep him keep him turning. After I hit him with the jab and, and, and I two piece him, I would move, pivot, you know, pivot and make him turn and make him reset every time I, I hit him with the jab. So he it slows his his attack down a little bit. That's just immediate tension. And then after I beat him, um, my my next task would be to um, unify the titles. Um, if that means beating Manny Pacquiao or fighting Manny Pacquiao and beating him. Taking getting his title from him after I've gotten Porter, and then nothing left after that but to fight Terrence Crawford. So that would be my goal if I was Earl Spence Jr. Um, I would beat Porter, beat Pacquiao, as long as Pacquiao still has the title, which I'm sure he will at that time. And then I would go to Al Heyman and tell him it's time for you to go and give Bob Aaron a call and get this fight made between me and Terrence Crawford. Okay. That's if I was Earl Spence, Jr. Okay. All right, so that's the, that was three. All right, go ahead and with your four. If I were HBO, if I were HBO, yes, I would bring boxing back. Bingo. And I would leave Jim Lampley, and well, Merchant was already gone, and um, I would retire. Um, what's the guy the ring? Um, Harold Letterman and all these other guys, I would have them, I would have a bunch of new guys there that um, are a little bit um, unbiased. Yes. But I would bring back boxing and, um, you know, come back with with a vengeance and reclaim what was rightfully ours for the longest time. Right. You know, there you go. I completely um, agree with that, Russ. Yeah. Completely agree with that. It's, you know, it, it, HBO. I mean, weren't they the first cable network to to host boxing events? Yeah, they always led the way. Um, Showtime was always trying to catch up to them, and mm-hmm. never could. But they Mayweather going over to Showtime, I think, was the beginning of the end for them. Yes, yes, I agree. You know, so I agree. Wow, that that's that's crazy, man. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I would do if I was if I was on HBO. Okay. All right. Next. If I were Urban Meyer. If I were Urban Meyer. Yes. Um, I would lay low for a while, spend some time with the family, you know, enjoy retirement, or, or I shouldn't say retirement because that's not what they called it, but I I would enjoy being away from football. Okay. And um, regroup, let the the press die down because you know people forget. Not not people forget, but people forgive. I should say, you know, time time heals all wounds or whatever. And I would let the press, you know, die down a little bit. And and you know, people, this is America. You can rewrite your story. 
and, and I think that's what needs to be done because Urban Meyer is a great football coach. Um, it's unfortunate how everything went down with that situation, and you know he made made some mistakes, and that's what I would do if I was Urban Meyer. I would lay low and then try to rebuild my image up, you know. But I would use utilize this time to to um, spend with my family and to to um, I guess deal with get to find some inner peace I guess with with myself or and, and then like I said try to get back if you want to coach football again which it seems like he does you know because right. he didn't call it a retirement and get back into coaching okay nice makes sense makes sense to me I, I you know that's exactly what I, that's the kind of advice I would give him to be honest with you so yeah. You know, that's exactly what I was. What, that's very, very much along the lines of what I would have said too, bro. So, on point with that. Um. All right. So, look, we're gonna have a bonus, just one each bonus. If I were, can we okay. do that? All right. Sure. So, I'll, I'll go ahead first. If I were Ezekiel Elliott, I would put down the tacos and burritos from um, wherever I was at. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Cabo, <laughs> Cabo, yeah. I would, I would put that down. Head back to, to Dallas camp, or back, back to Dallas, in shape, mm -hmm. and get my butt on the field and 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 earn and, and and play my rookie contract out. Even though, deep down inside, he knows that he's gonna get paid. Jerry Jones will pay that kid. He knows that. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know why he's, you know what I'm saying? Jerry, Jerry Jones will pay, he will get his money, Russ. You know, right. he's still on his rookie deal. He's going to get his money. And you know what? When he goes there, he, because he'll end up going there. You know, I don't know how you being a Cowboy fan, I don't, what do you think about that? Because I think he's going to end up going back. And Yeah, and, I think he's going to be a Cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's what I would do. If I were Ezekiel Elliott, go back in shape, play your ass off. Probably by mid mid season, no longer than that. I expect him to get you know a, a contract extension. You know what I mean? I, right. I, he, he'll get extended, man. Jerry, that's one thing Jerry Jones will do. You know, he'll take care of you once you you've proven yourself. And, and you know, as I'm, I'm sure Zeke feels that like he has proven himself. But right. Again, you're on your rookie deal, so technically, technically, he's not obligated to pay you. You know, especially when. You still have another year on that rookie deal. Exactly. And Dak and, you know, um, Amari Cooper, they're playing on their final year already. Exactly. You know, so, so, yeah, I agree. Yeah. If I were Zeke, I would, I would go back, back to Cowboy, to, back to Dallas in shape, um, you know, so they can see me and, 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 and know I'm, I'm there to, to work and, 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 and co hopefully, you know, for their sake, have a successful year, an uh, injury free year. You know what I'm saying? Get back and right. get back to football, man. Get back to football. You've been itching for playing football a whole freaking year. Get back to right. it. You right. know what I'm saying? So that's what I would do if I were Ezekiel Elliott. So. All right. If I were. <sighs> Nick Saban. If I were Nick Saban. Yes. I would stay at Alabama continue to recruit the way that I do, keep my recruiting team, my coaching staff. I will continue to do business as usual. And because in my situation, if it isn't broke, why fix it? You know, right. um, and the Crimson Tide have continued to roll and roll and roll, you know, and I will keep continue doing what I'm doing already. And um, I know I wouldn't go to the to the NFL. I tried that years ago and I'm going to, I have way more job security with Alabama and probably make even more money. So, um, I'm staying right where I am and I would continue to do what I'm doing. I wouldn't change a thing. Okay. All right. So he's basically, uh, you would basically, if you're Nick Saban, you would solidify your, 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 I guess your legacy and dynasty and greatness, you basically, you, you would kind of emasculate 
Paul Bear Bryant because yes, at this point, you know, I mean, he, he a lot. Most people would say he's the best coach in Alabama history <laughs> now. Right, right. You know, I mean, Bear Bryant did his thing with the six national titles, but right. Nick Nick's got a six too, right? I've, yeah, I've, I've, yeah, he's got six. Right. I mean, and you know, Alabama keeps winning and winning and dominating. So, oh, right, except for last year, I'm sorry. So that last year was uh, was uh, but wasn't they were in the championship. Yeah, they were in there, but you know, they might as well not have been because I mean that that was just <laughs> just an absolute debacle. Um, oh my goodness! <laughs> I mean, it was they they got I mean, one. Yeah. So. Represent. I mean, you're supposed to be the SEC representative. You just, you just get absolutely bolt raced like that. So I mean, <laughs> what did you say? They got what? Bolt raced. <laughs> 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 wow. So you know, I would go back to the drawing board and yeah, and, and focus on you know, like you said, like you said, getting the recruits and you know, keeping Alabama relevant and stuff like that. So yeah. you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we we heard it from the Big Ten, so <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> we, we, we just we just heard the Big Ten's opinion, so well, I, yeah, I mean, I, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's that, that's where it's coming from. It's coming from Big Ten country. My my opinion just came from the Big Ten, <laughs> right? Based on exclusively from the Big yeah. Ten, yeah, exclusively, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, I mean, I, I'm sure the ACC has something to say with it about them, though. You know, right? I'm sure, well, Clemson Clem- has. Clemson does. <laughs> Clem- yeah, yeah. Well, you're right. I'm sorry. Clemson Coast Conference, not the Atlantic. <laughs> <Right. laughs> wow, <laughs> ACC fans. <laughs> it's ACC. Clemson Coast. <laughs> oh man, but um. Yeah, Russ, man, it's, it's been it's, it's another great episode. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, dog. So you know, um, you know, uh, tomorrow. What we got tomorrow, man? What are we gonna do tomorrow? Uh, let's see. What can we do tomorrow? You want to do some MMA? Yeah, let's do some MMA. Let's do some MMA. Matter of what fact, do our, what do our top five? Top five MMA MMA yeah. uh, fighters yeah, of all time. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I like that. Top yeah, five. I say MMA. top five because boxing has been a longer history, so we could do top ten. I mean, we could do top ten in MMA, too, but we'll, we'll just do top five. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Yeah. With that, that's fine. All right, so that's what it is, then. We'll do that. And then, um, we, uh, you know what we should also do, too, tomorrow, if we had time? Um, we should try to do... Um, like a like a sort of like a you know I, I guess like a forecast on college college basketball. Yeah, we haven't touched on college basketball yet. Let's yeah. do that too. Yeah. So just you know, uh, just just basically our opinions on you know some of the top storylines you know coming up in college basketball. Right. You know about you know the Dukes and the North Carolinas and right different conferences and a you know, different type of players. So. Um, we should we we should try to touch on that tomorrow too. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's what's up. We'll do that's that, yes, sir. All right. Well, you know, um, tomorrow we're gonna be back at it again, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and um, you're always welcome for your opinions. Uh, even though we don't care what your opinion is, we're still gonna have our opinions. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> uh, just uh, thanks for listening again, and let's let's keep, let's keep this this train rolling, man. So absolutely. We'll, Back to it tomorrow, Russ. Tune in tomorrow, folks. Yes.